a 14. Good afternoon. Hi. Hello. Hey, Paul. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Russ, how you doing? I'm good. How are Hi, you, Jennifer. Paul? Hello. I was getting nervous. I've been on for like the last 10 minutes, just waiting. <laughs> been on oh. for 10 minutes? <laughs> well, I always start. I always come on early just in case folks come in early to the meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We're still early. All right, just a few minutes. Yep. So one one member did call and say that she was going to be a few minutes late. So and that was Tashina Bowman. So Tashina. Mm -hmm. Well, Russ will tell you, um, Jennifer, that I probably was late about 80% of the time of the central office meetings that we had when we were principals. So this is the first for me. I'm I'm doing quite well right now. I couldn't vouch for 80% of them because I was late for 50%. <laughs> oh, Pat needs to come in through. Um... <clears throat> oh. Pat, can okay. you hear us? Hi, Pat. You're muted. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Hi. Good to see Hi, you guys. Pat. Hi. Good to see you, Pat. Hi. Yeah. And Brianna is here. Oh. Hi. She's there. <laughs> Perfect. Hi, Brianna. Hey, Brianna. How are you guys? Hi, Good. Brianna. How are you doing? Good. Does everybody know each other here already or? I know Russ and I know Wally. Yeah, I don't know Brianna, but I'm glad to meet hey, you. Brianna. Nice, nice to Wally. meet you. Actually, it's the wrong wrong wireless, Pat. Wally, Wally, Wally. <laughs> I thought you said Wally. I said, Wally. Wally. Oh. I said oh. Paul, Paul Wally, I know you oh. very well. <laughs> I thought you said Wallace. I said. Oh. No, Wally, Wally. Did I say your last name right? You I did. Sure. It, you did. You did. I didn't hear it. I better. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Paul. And Paul Bachman's with us. Yes. Hello, hello. Hello. <clears throat> yeah, Brianna and I met at Town Hall. Oh, okay. We got sworn in at the same time. <laughs> and you were swearing at each other right at first? Something. Well, <laughs> not, not yet, but we're... <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, uh, yeah, we, we were right there. We had an appointment at the same time. So it was a, 
There's a two for one thing. <clears throat> and hello, Alicia. Hello. Hi. So Hi. Tashina did say that she was going to be a few moments late. Okay. Um, so I think she would have been the sixth person, correct? And is Deborah coming? Yeah, Deborah oh, Pereira right. is the other one. Yeah, there are now seven of us. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> so, hello, Alicia. Hello. Russell Vernon Jones. I recognize you from somewhere. <laughs> I don't know whether that's good or bad. But <laughs> good, a principal, correct? I was, but but no longer. No longer. <laughs> Good hey, afternoon, Deborah. Deborah. Hi, Hello, Deborah. How are you? Okay, so <clears throat> I think we can get us get mm -hmm. started. Um, as Tashina will be uh, a few moments late. So I would just like to say good afternoon and welcome to the first community safety working group meeting. And uh, for those who do not know me, my name is Jennifer Moisten and I'm one of three participation officers for the town manager and office and administrative assistant for the town manager's office. Um, I'm truly honored to be working with you all. We're gonna do great work. This is very exciting and um, as always in local government, we have a lot of bureaucratic items to go through today. So we are going to um, get started on some of those. First, I wanna say all of our meetings will be recorded and then they will be posted onto the website, <clears throat> um, onto our webpage that we have here at amherstma.gov. Um, the meetings are also in webinar format, which is the st standard format used by the town. And it also means that we will only be able to see each other. The audience, we won't be able to see um, and they won't be able to see each other. And there is also no chat or discussion bar where you can type into. Um, so if folks have something to say during the public comment period, then they can uh, just wait until the public comment. But I want you guys to also know as members that you're not supposed to respond during the public comment portion. So if, um, individuals would like things to be put addressed onto the agenda, they should contact me ahead of time and then I will send it out to the group. And uh, now at this time, I'd like to introduce our town manager, Paul Bockelman. Okay. Thanks, Jen. Thanks for organizing this and pulling this all together. Um, and thank you all for stepping up and um, going through the interview process, which was pretty intense. Uh, we had a great interview team that participated and um, we really have a very strong team here. Um, this is a really important uh, public body. Um, it's something, it's a, a, an area that we really need to concentrate on and the town administration, uh, me and everybody on our staff are totally committed to working through um, the subjects that you wanna bring to, to the fore in, in this. Uh, it's a, you, there's an intense amount of work that you have to do in a limited period of time. We want to provide all the support that you need to be able to do your work, but we know it's going to be an imposition on you. So uh, we and I want to thank you for that. Um, and Jen Moiston, uh, who is the, you know, who's here, uh, is going to be providing the, the logistical and administrative support for this whole process. And so um, just again, I just really want to say thank you. And um, we, this is all new to us and we're going to sort of figure our way through, but it's a very public process. So be you know, prepared for there to be a lot of people watching and paying attention to what the types of things you're thinking about, but it'll be really important. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So now we are going, so for this meeting on, until we um, have a chair for the group, I will be running the meeting. And so the next item on the agenda is we're gonna to call to order the meeting, which officially started at 4.03. And we're gonna do some introductions. And so because I'm a little bit corny, I'm going to say, I have a few introductory team building 
act, virtual activities for us to do. So one of them is that as you introduce yourself, which I will call because everyone's screen is different, um, I would like you to tell me uh, what you are binge watching or binge watching worthy <laughs> show. Okay. And so, and then afterwards, we have to kind of try to remember whose show is whose, if that works. And so I'm going to start with Mr. Wiley. I'm sorry, Paul. No, it's quite all right. It's quite all right. So outside of the, the, the binge watching, which you got me caught up in, in my brain, all of a sudden, <laughs> how else are we introducing ourselves? <laughs> Just your name and, um, and why you would like to be involved in this working group. Sure, sure. <clears throat> my name is Paul Wiley. I've been a resident in, of this town since 1982. Uh, I've had the, the privilege and honor of working in the public school system uh, from 82 to 2008. And uh, I have children that have gone through the school system. And knowing a lot of, of folks um, in the town over those years and knowing the town quite well and knowing what the needs are. My interest is just contributing whatever time and energy I can to do the work needed by this community. And uh, in, in the name of, of community safety, whatever that plays out to be, I hope to be a, a contributor to, to help us get to our goal. In terms of binge watching, <clears throat> I think I'd have to go with, um, a combination of a couple of things because I don't get a chance to watch television too much. So we record a lot of things. So um, I do binge watch Trevor Noah at night and James Corden. And because I need some comic relief these days sometimes uh, totally. and trying to beg off of the uh, national network news for a minute. Uh, so I haven't found anything to really, really binge watch yet. So I'll be working on it, trust me. Great. And um, Mr. Vernon Jones, Russ? Uh, yeah, I'm Russ Vernon Jones. I've been in town since uh, eight, 1981. Uh, my children went through the school system. I worked in the school system. Um, and uh, you know, I'm very committed to, to things going well in town. And um, I, you know, I think we got to this, we have this committee partly because of um, <clears throat> people raising issues of racism uh, nationally and locally. Uh, and I'm really interested in how we use our charge and the play, things we're thinking about to think about issues of race in the town generally. Um, in a sense, you know, where any, any racism anywhere makes the community less safe. Uh, so if we're about community safety, I think we get to think about that and our process may perhaps can be a model for uh, how the town can, can address things. And, you know, I don't think, uh, you know, our police department is out there intentionally being racist uh, at all, but I do think that, in a situation with systemic racism and unconscious mm -hmm. bias, uh, that it's inevitable that uh, it's reflected in the work of any department that's not very actively seeking to have a anti-racist focus uh, to its mm -hmm. work. Um, so those issues are uh, ones that are dear to my heart and uh, I'm you know, just so happy to have the chance to engage in them with, with all of you and looking forward to getting to to know each of you better. Um, binge watching, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the show, but it's the, the, um, the one where the a designated survivor, uh, the guy becomes president when the entire, the president and the entire cabinet are all killed and uh, runs the government after that. Right, and Brianna? My name is Brianna Owen. I have been an Amherst resident for the last nine years. I graduated from UMass Amherst, went to the high school in Amherst, and now I actually run a, organ, um, a program through a nonprofit that serves young people in Amherst, Hadley, and Hamden County. So I'm really excited to be the change that I want to see in the community. Um, 
yeah, a show that I am binge watching right now is How to Get Away with Murder. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend to anyone that has not seen it yet. <laughs> and um, Paul? So full, full disclosure, I did not know this question in advance. So um, I'm Paul Bachelman, uh town manager. Um, I've been town manager for just over four years, um, but I lived here a long time ago when I went to Hampshire College. So I'm a graduate of Hampshire College um, and then moved away and then moved back here for this position. Um, and I, I love I love Amherst, always have, and um, r- really enjoy working with everybody who's been involved in the town. Um, my binge watch show, um, I mean, I don't do a lot of binge watching. Um, I have a binge watch. I sort of have my sort of guilty pleasure. So the binge watch I've just, we just finished is the Americans, uh, which I really liked. Um, it's about these deep undercover Russian agents who grew up and live in the United States. And then my sort of, um, (laughs) stupid thing I watch is uh, Gilmore Girls. And I think I sort of watch that because I <laughs> missed my daughter who's, who's who doesn't who's in her 20s now. And um, that was something that was sort of traditional. So when that's, uh, that's like, if I just want to like eat sugar, that's what I watch. <laughs> and Alicia? Hi, my name is Alicia Walker. Um, I have lived in Amherst for over 21 years. I grew up here. Um, I graduated from Amherst High School. I also attended UMass. I now also have three children who go to school in Amherst. Um, I am very excited to be a part of this group because (coughs) Amherst is a community that I really care about. This is the only community I've ever been a part of. um, And I feel like Amherst has a lot of potential. So I'm really excited to be a part of some of a team that's going to see what our community needs and work towards what we can do to address that. Um, and as far as binge watching, I don't have much time to watch TV um, at all. <laughs> I usually don't. But just actually a couple of nights ago, I was trying to find something to watch before I went to bed on Netflix. And I stumbled across The Queen's Gambit, which is about... Um, mm. The chess player, the woman chess player from, I don't remember which year, but it was a while back when it was taboo for women to be doing things like this. And she came in like a storm and beat everybody. And I really got stuck and watched the almost entire show in one night. (laughs) And Deborah? Hello, everyone. Um, glad to, to see you all and be part of this. Uh, so I've been an Amherst resident for 22 years now. Um, started out as a UMass um, student and graduated from UMass, then left for a couple of years and then came back. Uh, I have two kids in the school system right now. One is 16 and one is 11, um, t- both males. Um, and, you know, one of the main reasons for me to get involved, one is because of my children, they're African American and Cape Verdean, I'm Cape Verdean, West African. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on and, you know, everything happening in the nation and, and the impact that it's having um, here locally too, uh, in terms of racial profiling and, you know, as Russ was talking about uh, racism, systemic racism, um, that's been something that I've done because I've worked for UMass and I've done my own consulting around diversity, equity, and inclusion, something that's very dear to my heart. Uh, but of course, I don't. I want every every citizen here in, in Amherst um, to be able to be themselves and not be racially profiled or have to deal with microaggressions and different issues um, because of their race, ethnicity, or any other isms, right? Um, so, you know, for me, I have, you know, a lot going on in my life in terms of the kids, work, I have an elderly mother, and actually I have to say right now that I'm the main caretaker for my mother, and she's in the hospital, so I might have to, if, while we're meeting, have to kind of step away because, you know, the doctor has been calling me um, from time to time, so I, I'd, I'd have to take that. Uh, but anyway, so that being said, I have a lot going on. Therefore, I'm, I'm taking part in this because I really believe in this, and I think it's time for us to make a change and make a difference. Uh, in the public, in the in the um, safety uh, agencies, and so, you know, I'm really looking forward to this, and I hope we're we're, we're going to do some good work. Uh, in terms of binge watching, because I do need to to watch something to kind of, you know, brighten my day because of everything that I'm I'm doing. 
I love Dancing with the Stars. It's on right now. Uh, it's my show, and you know I record it and I watch it whenever I can, uh, especially since we can't go dancing uh, during this COVID time. So that's me. Great, and Pat. Hi everyone. So I came to this country in 1983 from Nigeria. I ha I have five children. They all went to MS public school system. I will say that. Um, they were fortunate, they had very great education, except for one, I do have a child with special need that didn't have a good experience, uh, he has autism. I went to UMass, um, Amherst. Um, I've had uh, several administration positions in social services. And about uh, 15 years ago, I opened a, a, a Baku African restaurant in town for a decade and currently I run um, an L, uh, Baco Care Adult Day Health in, in Hadley. So in terms of um, what prompted me to join this group, I've been very active in community in pushing for social justice uh, from the school system, in, including the, uh, discipline gap and achievement gap in the school system. And um, in 2004 through 2018, the town actually created a racial profiling um, group, which I was part of it. Actually, a friend of mine, Jackie Hazard, was the one who encouraged me to join the group. And it, to me, it felt, it felt like a complete waste of time because we weren't getting much cooperation from the police department. And so this year, when I got an invitation from the town manager. I am a very optimistic person and I said, you know, I'll give this a trial again and just go with the flow. And, you know, perhaps with the momentum with um, what is going on in, in the nation, maybe this is a time for our town to do something. So I'm joining this group with open mind. I'm excited. I'd like to be positive and be hopeful. Um, AMES has been a great community for me and my family. Um, I come from a, a family of police uh, in my home country. I have uncles and cousins who are police officers. And I will hope that one of the things that we will, you know, come up with is to find ways to also provide support to our police officers. Some of them who are doing a great job, but we do have problems in this, in this community. Being a parent of uh, African-American children, this is what we talk about all the time um, at home, uh, even when they were here before they all went on their ways. So um, I miss, you know, this is a time, you know, to really address institutional racism in our, in our community. So I'm looking forward to working with you all. In terms of binge um, watching, so my sister is here visiting. So sometimes he will put on um, Nigerian video. So that's really, really good, you know, for me to like chill after listening to like C CNN. And believe it or not, I do watch Fox News sometimes, MSNBC, but it's good to really, you know, watch movies from my home country. So let me shut up. That's it. <laughs> Um, so welcome to Sheena. So what we're doing is a quick introduction um, of ourselves and our history here in Amherst and why you would like to be part of this group or what made you decide to be part of this group. And also um, you have to give a reference to something to binge watch so we can learn a little something about you. Um, <laughs> um, so my name is Sheena Bowman. I've been in Amherst since like, I think it was like 89. I went to Amherst Middle School, went to Amherst High. Um, quit, just graduated my third child from Amherst this past COVID summer. Um, and yeah, like I've, um, I don't know, a lot of people know me from African dance. My mom's like really involved with that. Um, I am doing, I'm working on doing a lot more work um, in the birth community. I'm a student um, or assistant midwife as well as a uh, doula. 
been doing that for 16 years. Um, and, you know, the um, communities that I'm trying to serve are women of color, are uh, low income people because they're dying at higher, women of color in particular are dying, black women are dying at higher rates. Um, it's like, it's like for every, it's like one to four or something like that. Like it's really high, it's ridiculous. Um, and I think that it has a lot to do with representation. And that being said, um, I've always been pretty disappointed in the representation in this town um, as far as like, um, you know, people say that this town is so diverse and it's not, it's not. Just because you have a bunch of people of color who are in the town, diversity is coming from the top. It's coming from who's making decisions. It's coming from um, who's interacting with communi the community at large. And um, so there's no, there's, there's very little, if not, if any representation of people of color in, um, in higher, offices, whatever, of in Amherst. Um, another reason why I kind of got involved is because I've had um, my, my now 20, almost 25 year old, my child was um, stopped. Um, there was an incident that happened a few years back on New Year's Eve um, at a party that my son was at. Um, he left the party before the incident, but then got um, stopped and detained by Amherst police. Um, and it took a crowd of kids to make them let him go. Um, he gave them his information, you know, he told them he wasn't part of this. He, you know, and it turns out he wasn't, he didn't even fit the description of who they were looking for. Um, so that's a problem. And also, um, I know that I've seen some incidences where um, people with mental health issues are being targeted by Amherst police. Um, and so I just feel like um there's a level of accountability that needs to happen and it's the community that needs to like formulate that and and help that um help change what our how our community is and not also to make it so it's not we're not just we're not just police we don't have just policing we have we have community community, you know, we have our police working with the community, being part of the community. Um, also, I think that it's extremely important that um, for all people of like decision, decision making, um, you know, whoever's making decisions within the town, that they, there needs to be um, historical understanding of why change needs to happen. Um, and there also um, needs to be more understanding of mental health issues. Um, I think mental health issues are really huge in this community, especially after they, you know, close the hospitals down. So it really makes it, it really matters, um, how things are going um, and, you know, what the focus is on and so on and so forth. Um, binge watching. So currently, I'm binge watching a couple shows. I'm wa binge watching Half and Half, which is a show that was like on a while back <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> and then I'm binge watching and I love that. Show. I like really had a new new appreciation watching it like as an adult. Um, and I and I think that um, so that I just say find it hilarious. And then I also have been binge watching One on One, which is another show from the 90s that or the late to early 2000s. Um, and yeah, both of those shows are like streaming right now. And I was just like, I forgot about this show. This is amazing. I love this. Yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. Great. Thank you. And so I am. Um... Jennifer, as you know, and I have lived in Amherst for the last 43 years. When I think about it now, that's a really long time. Um, and so I've watched Amherst transition from multiple stages. Um, but I'm really just vested in the community. Uh, my three children have gone to school here. I went to school here. I think I've spent more time on the Amherst football field than I don't, you know, probably than I care to like to. Still a few more years to go. Um, I'm connected to almost everyone here in some 
indirect or direct manner, um, except for you, Ms. Brianna. So I'm really looking forward to working with you and getting to know you better. And uh, Deborah, so I went to Upward Bound with Sid and um, he was my counselor. And so there's the connection there. Um, and I'm just really excited that we could take these steps to move forward and making Amherst be the best Amherst that it can be. Oh, and, binge watching binge show, watching? right? <laughs> yeah. So I tend to binge watch and then stop and then go back to it. So there's a, there's a couple of them and it really depends on my mood. So uh, there was a The Handmaid's Tale for a little bit, mm -hmm. which is a little bit uh, creepy, but that's a good one. And Stranger Things. And then on the lighter side of it, it's the Golden Girls. I don't, yeah, I have a thing with the Golden Girls. I just, I you know, it just, like it helps relax me a little bit, you know, a little blanche. Everybody needs some. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with that being said, we have one more little uh corny group activity to do. And so I'm going to give you a scenario. There are a dozen eggs in a carton and 12 people each take a single egg, but there is one egg left in the carton. How did that happen? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> there are a dozen eggs in a carton and 12 people take, 12 people each take one egg but there is still one egg left in the carton. One of them shares. The last person took the carton with the egg inside. <laughs> 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 yes, you will have a couple of weeks full of these wonderful <laughs> things. <laughs> you have to get a, you're going to have to get like a little drum roll right after that, you know, yeah. because... <laughs> Or either start the meetings earlier when my brain is more alert. You know, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. So we're going to move forward with the agenda. Um, and so the third item on the agenda are the rules of the road serving on a public body. As some of you have never done that before, and I'm just going to say welcome to the local government 101. Um, it can be a little bit much. I'm going to do some screen sharing. And I've put together a uh, PowerPoint for us to kind of go through the items. And fingers crossed that I like this all completely works 100% because I'm a little nervous. It is. Okay, so yes, this is the Community Safety Working Group. And this is our agenda for today. And so now we're gonna kind of go into, here's what you need to know. And this is the purpose of our community safety working group, which is to make recommendations on alternative ways of providing public safety services to the community and make recommendations on reforms to the current organizational oversight structure of the Amherst Police Department. This is our charge. So each committee has a charge and that basically explains what the committee will be doing. That's what they're charged with. Uh, transparency in local government is very important. So for instance, that's why we record so that we can play later and um, people can go look back at um, what happened at the meeting. And so there are two major things. One is the conflict of interest law, which you've all uh, should have been certified and returned that to the clerk's office. And for other reference, there's Robert's rules of order. Here's a little bit of information on the summary of the conflict of interest. I won't go into it too far, but basically there's no, you can't hold your position over anyone really is the, the bottom line of that. So here today is something that we might discuss and hopefully we can um, develop is each board and committee needs a chair. Some of them have a vice chair, which I highly suggest in the anticipation that the chair is not available. And then a minute taker. So I do suggest for the minute taker that we, that folks rotate and take turns so that everybody has a chance to A, 
be involved in the group and not one person is is taking all of the minutes but also so everyone can have that opportunity to be involved in that manner by taking the minutes. So again, um, as I said earlier, public comment is a time for the public to bring their concerns to the group. And there is always a designated time at some point during the meeting for public comment. Um, but we are the board and the committee members are not allowed to respond to public comment and the appropriate way if um, individuals would like something to be on an agenda would be to send it in to myself. Uh, otherwise, it could possibly get keep getting tabled and tabled through meeting to meet from meeting to meeting. Um, there is no gathering. So if you all are at a separate event and there's four of you that are gathering or five of you that are gathering together, that is considered a quorum and that puts you in violation of the open meeting law. And as well as there's no speaking on behalf of the group as an individual. And if Paul or I send you an email as a group, please reply only to Paul and myself as opposed to replying for all because if four or five of you or more reply to that then that too is a violation of the open meeting law. Um, as a community safety working group member you have no power individually but as a group you have all the power. The power lies within the vote. So we've got teamwork and a, a nay and a yay I there. So we have some basic Zoom etiquette. We'd ask that you guys pay attention. You have a, a comfortable working spot where it will be quiet, which we all know sometimes that doesn't work out as well as we know. Uh, your tech is ready to go, your communication is ready to go, and that you're being professional, of course, as they are all the meetings are recorded. We use a Zoom webinars to try to avoid Zoom bombings. A Zoom bomb is when a group or an individual kind of crash the meeting and then they take control over the screen and we lose control and they like to bombard us with disturbing content. If for some reason we are Zoom bombed, I'd ask you to exit the meeting and then re-enter. The difference between, this is sometimes an, an issue for folks, so I just wanted to explain the difference between the Zoom webinar versus the meeting style. Um, so we just have more control in a Zoom webinar, although there's certain things that we can't do like the breakout rooms and such, but we won't really need, we can't use those in this circumstance, so that's okay. And just to recap, the working group acts by passing motions. The working group can only act when there is a quorum of members present. Meetings must be posted at least 48 hours in advance. As an individual members, you have no authority to act, but as a group, you can act by voting on motions. And again, the power is in the vote. And then that's that. It's your little crash course on local government 101. So uh, the next item on the agenda is to discuss the charge. Do you all have a copy of the charge in front of you? I can pull it back up again if you would like. Excuse me, Jennifer, can I ask a question about the previous section, the, the, the local government things? Yes. Do we have an obligation to keep any email we receive relative to um, the work of the group or any correspondence we have with each other? Is, are we required to maintain that in files? Paul, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, so this is that's the public records law. So any correspondence that this group generates to each other or to us, you know, through the town is a public record. So someone can come in and say, send me all the correspondence that members of the committee sent uh, uh, regarding the community safety working group. So one of the ways we try to address that is because we're not setting up, you don't have a town email address or anything like that is if you were to, if you were sending an email, you would copy Jennifer, then that gets logged into the town server. So if someone makes a public records request, our IT department will just search for everything and they can just grab it out of, out of her email server. But um, you know, this has hap this happens with, some frequency and we will send if someone says i'd like to see anybody 
uh, suppose someone says, I want to see anything that this committee talked about in terms of the police department, we would ask you to generate, give us any emails that you sent concerning this work, not your other personal stuff, but this, right. this committee in particular um, concerning police, and you would have to uh, think about this. So one of the things I always think about is when I'm writing something, um, I think, suppose this wound up on the front page of the Gazette. Just assume that. So when you're putting things in writing, um, just be cognizant that someone else is likely to read it other than the intent. And it can be forwarded and all those things. Just, you know, you know we, we want to make sure everybody is alert to what the possibilities are. And how will the public communicate with us? So, yeah, so that so we can do two things. Um, typically, they would come into Jennifer, who would be is the primary point person. The other thing that we've done with other groups is we set up a sort of a listserv, so that it someone could write to say community safety working group at amherstma.gov, and then when, whoever writes to that, it gets sent out to everybody. And I think that might be a good way to do it um, because then that records it, and everybody gets to see everything. And I think that's just the you know, and we will get a lot of correspondence from, think, I think, from the public. Um, so that's probably the easiest way. So no one's filtering what you're seeing. I think that's good to hear too, because uh, similar to what Russ was asking, there, you know, a number of us have been in the community for a long time, and it would not be unusual for somebody to sort of sidebar a conversation and send, you know, Deborah an email or or me an email or Pat, you know, or somebody just because they know us. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's a way we can make that very public too, that because the work of the community, of this committee, of this working group, excuse me, and the, um, uh, and what needs to be shared is, is funneled through a particular portal. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I, and I think that's, that's a good um, question, Paul, that, that you're bringing up because yeah, we are, I'm pretty sure we are gonna get kind of questions from the community. So for me, you know, what would be, how do you all want us to handle that? Do you, I think, you know, I think we need to set up that portable a portal as, as soon as possible, because I'm, I can see that happening um, very quickly in terms of questions. So if that's the way we need to funnel it, then, you know, then we should set that up because I can see that happening. Also, just so you all know too, uh, I didn't take it because I'm too busy, but I was contacted by Amherst Media already asking for an interview. So they were asking me to be interviewed as part of this working group. So that was the question that I had. Obviously I didn't I didn't I didn't do the interview because you know also I'm I'm just too busy. So I got back to them I said I'm I'm too busy I can't can't do it and that was that. But that's something that so how do we handle those things, right? Because they are gonna want to hear from us. Can we hold, you know, can we hold interviews? I mean those were questions that came up for me. Mm -hmm. afterwards so those are some of the things that you know I think we need answers to because also I don't want us to at least for me I don't want to, to hide things too I want to be transparent so how do so, we handle those yeah those are really good questions and that's really interesting so you decide as a group how you want to handle that you know you're the the seven people who are appointed to serve on this group and you you make your rules on this I can tell you what the town council does they have elected a president which is like a chair and what they say is the chair responds to all correspondence for us and all media re inquiries go to the chair. So there's one point of contact. And then if the chair, the chair can say, oh, um, can you take this or can you take this? I'm, um, you know, it's, I, I can't answer all these things, but you will get contacted by the press uh, seeking comment. And so what a lot of committees do is that, oh, I don't need, I don't address this. This goes to the chair and then there's, you can have the conversations here. It's up to you how you want to handle it though. Um, but again, I, you know, I, I would always, in, in some of those things always include Jennifer in. So um, she's alert to what's going on as well. As a follow-up, if I may, uh, Jennifer and, and Paul, to what Deborah's saying, I got the same invitation and I, I deferred it. I said, you know, we're, we haven't had our first meeting yet. So for me to go out, they, you know, I think what they were asking us, Deborah, is, mm -hmm. you know, what do you hope to get out of this work yeah. with the yeah. community? And I, you know, I'd rather have a conversation mm -hmm. with people I'm going to work with before I put, you know, myself out there saying, this is what I want to get out of it. Exactly. And, uh, so I, I just put that off uh, yeah. until further notice. 
Yeah, me too. That's why I sidestepped. I was like, I'm too busy. So Did anybody it. else get one of those? <laughs> oh, actually, I want to comment on that. Uh, for the sake of transparency, I was contacted actually like three days ago and I did agree to have the interview. It was just 10 minutes. I told them that I spoke just on myself individually that we have not met yet. It, it was really brief um, interview. So I did it. They're going to air it tomorrow, I think, at 6 p.m. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't speak on behalf of anyone. I just spoke for myself. Similar to the introduction that we did today. That's it. I didn't, yeah. Did you do well? <laughs> Not really. I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we can all. It, the woman said it would be like a few second clip or something. You know? Yeah, that's what she said. I was going to say, if you did a really good job, we could also say we agree. I don't know about agree. that. <laughs> we agree so, with that. So I, I also have a, is a question or comment. Like, I do belong to some groups. Should I still be attending those groups if issues about this group comes up? You know, how should I handle that? That's a really good question. I think... Um... You make your own judgment, obviously. Um, I don't think you want to, you don't exclude yourself from any of your social other things that you're involved with, but you have to recognize just what you said before is when I'm acting as a member of this committee and when I'm not, what hat are you wearing at that moment in time? People won't separate. They won't distinguish many times. So and they'll say, so um, yeah, I don't think you're going to um, withdraw from everything that you're involved in. Obviously, there's, the reason you're all part of this is that you're involved in a lot of things and you're connected to lots of people. And that's what makes the group so powerful. So I think just being careful about when you're speaking um, and people will say, hey, I got four people to all say this thing. And you don't want to be in that, be triangulated that way, I don't think. And Brianna, did you have something to say? So I was also contacted by Amherst Media and I also didn't respond. So I'm glad that we went over this for clarification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got contacted too and I did, I responded and I did do the interview and it was basically the same thing I said today, like to you guys, like it was just basically like, this is why I'm wanting to be part of this, this, um, this, you know, working group. Mm -hmm. It's just important to me. and. You know, so, and then we talked about dual stuff. So, we, <laughs> I don't know. It always, somehow it always goes to back to babies for me. So, and and the intern actually asked me for Alicia's contact information. Alicia, I messaged you, but I don't know if you got my email. I did see your email, but they did not contact me yet. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, I. I mean, is that okay? <laughs> because yeah, I mean, we are public, you know, we're public servant, right? Yeah, so that's our okay. information is public. I'm assuming, right? Like if somebody contact me, I'm trying to reach somebody from this group. Yeah, I think that's um, having having you all agree to how you want to handle that. You you can say we all can do whatever we want. You can say whoever we elect as our chair is, you know, any media request goes to the chair and they handle it because that someone's going to have to speak for your group um, at That's some right. point. And so you need someone there who's going to be that person. And it's probably better that that person is on in sync with how everybody else thinks or you they, you agree with what they're going to say, because you're going to have this is going to be a process, you know, there's not gonna be a, you know, you're gonna have to figure out things as you as we move as you move along. Got it. Yeah. And, and yeah, and for me, just so you all know, I mean, obviously, you know, being a UMass employee too, I have certain, you know, kind of, uh, and I talked talk to Paul about that. I have certain things that I have to follow. Like for instance, if, if this group starts talking about like UMass kind of issues, town gown things, I have to recuse myself. I can't chime in on those types of things. Um, so I'm going to have to kind of, you know, be clear and I'll, I'll point it out, you know, obviously. Um, the other thing too, though, I made an exception today just because I knew you all wanted to get the meeting started. Um, 
you know, before for this week, but I can only do like meet like after five or maybe even like during lunch or something like that, because obviously I can't be on kind of UMass time, you know, but obviously, you know, like today, you know, I, I'm, I'm just working an extra hour, that an hour and a half, that type of thing. But, um, but usually, you know, that's, that's the case. I think uh, this group will be a big adjustment for me because I am a self-employed woman. I'm used to doing things my own way. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm my, my own boss. So it would be quite an adjustment. It's been a long time that I worked for somebody. So big adjustment for me. <laughs> there is a lot with local government and and sometimes things don't move as fast as we would hope that they would um, with local government either. So it is an adjustment. And, um, you know, for instance, I'm a board member of the Amherst Survival Center. So it's very often that I have to recuse, recuse myself from different topics. Um, and just being in the community itself at a football game or pre-COVID um, or any type of event, when people approach me, you know, you just, you really have to use your own discretion there and how you respond to people and what you say, because what you don't want to happen is have them walk away and say, well, Jennifer told me this, right? Because that's, that's not the message that we're trying. And again, individually, there's there's less power. The power really is as a group together. So, and in our vote. I just want to add one. So it's very, what, what we're going to go through is very clumsy. And why is it clumsy? It's because our, our government is very transparent. So every conversation you have is going to be recorded in this setting. It's going to be recorded. So anybody can watch and participate and observe what has happened in the past. So, you know, it's, it's that, it, and so it sort of will take a little bit of spontaneity out of things. So, um, and the sort of how you might want to be talking about things more personally or, or something like that sometimes it, it's so you have to think about that, but, um, but it is how we are. I think we, we, we value transparency over, over the other, you know, anything else that would, that's our top priority. So Pete, the public can see what's happening in terms of how the local government is working. So did you guys wanna have a dis, well, I guess maybe we should um, try to move on to the next discussion piece, which is um, identifying a chair and a vice chair. And, uh, you know, this is our first meeting and not everybody knows each other fully here. So I don't know if you guys are ready to make a decision as such now. Does anybody have thoughts or does anybody is there, volunteer? Is there anyone that wants to, to, to be the chair and the vice chair? I guess that would be the way I would kind of think of it. Is this something that we have to decide today? No. No. No volunteers? Okay. Honestly, I got a lot on my plate. Like I was like thinking about it, but I was like, no, I, I got a lot on my plate right now. Um, and so I'm trying to, like, I was like thinking about where I might be able to fit that in, but I just feel like it'd be, it would throw me into anxiety, like craziness. And I don't, mm -hmm. we don't can want we, this to take you down. Can we nominate people? Can we nominate people? Absolutely. Paul Wiley. <laughs> Second that. I second, I second, I second Paul. Again? <laughs> I need a second. Yeah, Who Deborah second. Second awesome. it, I second it. Awesome, awesome. But we take you're, doing, you're doing such a good job with that, Pat. You might as well just keep being chair. <laughs> well, and what about Pat as the as the vice chair? Hmm. Hmm. As long as I don't have to do any work. Because <laughs> <laughs> I come to meetings all the time. So run it. <laughs> Let me, can I ask you just to, uh, you made a motion. Okay, it was seconded. Can we discuss this for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Seems because fair. Paul, you know, in terms of the timeline for this, and it's already been stated very clearly that there's a lot of work and there's going to be a lot, you know, of, of demand in order to come up with a product in a very short period of time. This is not an, an ongoing thing right so 
I did I see something somewhere that said by January 15th there's going to be some kind of a report ready. Yes, so the chart the council has given us given me the responsibility to come back to them by January end of January. So I put January 15th as a, as a time to come back with a recommendation on the first stage um, of things. And that's looking at other ways to deliver community safety services. Um, and I think the reason for that is that that build, that helps um, build into the budget creating budget setting right. process so we can get this going um, sooner than later instead of taking a year and then waiting another year to get it in. It's, I think there is some urgent there is urgency to get something. What we can accomplish in, in you know two months, less than two months is going to be a it's just we're going to be able to and there's holidays in there. there's going to be a, a limit to that. Also, you should be aware that you if you choose, you can, we have resources available to hire support for you, you know, uh, consultants or somebody who can help you work through some of these things. So that's an option that helps do the legwork in between meetings because it's too much, I think, to you might say we need research on different programs. We don't want someone to come in and give us a report on it. We want this instead of you all doing lots of different, you know, research on your own. So you have that option. Um, so and we have, you know, appropriated funds to support this committee's work. That's good to know. Because we're, we're probably going to need that. Yeah. Can we get a support for somebody to be a note taker for us instead of rotating? We could, if you choose that. Okay. So what do you say, Paul? Uh, to the motion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here, here's the deal. I, I, I'd be happy to chair it. All right. And here's why, because knowing most of the people here, um, I know that everybody will pitch in. I know there's a bunch of skills here of people I already know. I don't know Brianna um, and uh, Alicia yet well, but I'm sure, you know, if coming to this committee, you come with a particular skill set. So I don't think any of us will abandon each other in the work. And so, and with some kind of support in the short time period, um, you know, somebody has to step forward right now. I can't, I don't think, you know, it's going to, the, it's going to change too much before another few days. Although, unless I would be ready to defer if somebody else is actually thinking about it and needs time to think about it. Alicia, you brought up this thing, you know, do you want, do we have to, you know, today? And if it's not today, then people want to think about it, that's fine. But I think we'd have to decide on what day we're going to make that decision. So, you know, I'd be willing to, you know, I don't, have to step forward if other people are interested in doing that and just need more time to think. I just want to be respectful to the everybody here. Well, I guess for me, it would be like, is, is someone else thinking about being a chair and would need more time? Because I guess since we do have a, a, a big amount of work to, to get done, it's kind of like, if there's someone else thinking about it, we could definitely, you know, table it and think some more. If not, then I think we should probably move along with uh, Paul. I also support the nomination of um, Mr. Wiley for chair. Um, should we take a vote? I don't know. I feel I, like- I, I, I think think We should yeah. take a vote, huh? Yeah, ask Pat. Yeah, we should <laughs> take, a, take vote. a vote. <laughs> yeah, we should take a vote. All right. <laughs> yes, for me. All right, it's a yes for me. It's a yes for, yes me. for me. It's a yes for me. I, I certainly vote yes. I don't know. What, does this count as a roll call vote? <laughs> I, I think oh, so. It probably does. Do I need to go through and ask each individual person by name? So yeah, that's yeah. actually, a, a, I think you actually did. I think I heard everyone say yes. Yeah. You, yeah. But um, it is a roll call. But but technically, when you're on a Zoom meeting, all all votes are by roll call, and so okay. that's what we just did. Okay. okay. Congratulations, right. and you're Thank now chairing you, the meeting. All right, Paul. Thank you. Yay! And so your vice chair? Yay, us. Is that you, Pat? Well, I don't know. Let's discuss it. Is anybody <laughs> interested in being vice chair? 
if anybody is interested, I'll, I don't mind. Well, I think we could do it two ways. Is anybody interested? And then Paul, is there someone in particular you'd like to, to have in that role? I, and any, any person on this screen right now, I'd be happy to work with. Like I said, I don't know everybody's level of interest. I know people have very busy schedules. I would think all of us fit in that, in that description in terms of what we're doing. So um, uh, okay. whomever would like to join that uh, you know, that be in that role, it would be great to partner with, with them. So I, I, I can't honestly, and in all fairness, make a choice within this, within this group. I think the choice has to come from an individual. Mm -hmm. I have a quick clarifying question. So mm -hmm. the role of the vice chair would just be to fill in when the chair is not present. Do they have any other roles besides that? Except if you get a chair that delegates a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Which he won't do. <laughs> but that is a good question. You know, that's one of the questions. Paul, maybe you can answer that. Huh? Yeah, and I think you're right. I mean, the committee decides what powers it wants to give to the chair and to the vice chair. And, you know, if the chair isn't present, then clearly the vice chair runs the meeting um, and Sometimes chairs will sit in with when you're talking about the next agenda. Sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes the chair will delegate, hey, why don't you be our public spokesperson on these things? And, and it's sort of a logic. The committee has then decided who's our second in command in terms of that type of public out, you know, outward facing um, discussions. Who's interested in the position? Um, I'm actually interested in the position. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Sure. Hearing the stuff, the responsibilities you guys all have, it's amazing that you're all um, volunteering time to come here. I actually have a lighter schedule. I manage a, a program that works with foster kids in Hadley, and I'm working remote, so I actually do have a bit of a lot more free time right now, and I make my own schedule. So I think that would be doable if you guys were all on board with that. Sure. Yes, I'm on board. I'd be on board with that. Yeah, I second that. Sounds good. Great. So do we do we need to do so the vote let, again? Let, like I a would, motion I would to like Brianna? To, yeah, why don't we uh someone would like to nominate Brianna? I nominate Brianna as our vice chair. Someone second, second that, please. I second. Any discussion? No. Okay. <laughs> no discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call. Russ. Aye. Pat. Aye. I'm going around the screen here. Deborah. Yes. Alicia. Aye. Paul. The other Paul. He doesn't get a vote. He oh, doesn't you don't get vote. a vote. Oh, that's right. I guess that's, and Tashina. Tashina. Aye. Okay, you're in. Can I make a comment? I'm really glad about this. Um, positions because I'm thinking intergenerational. Mm -hmm. So to have the elders, meaning an elder, which I'm in that group, myself, Ross and Paul, and then to have the younger generation. So to, to split the position, I think is wonderful. So that's why I decided to like, you know, stay back. I think it's wonderful. I agree. So, that's yeah. a good point. I, I like that. I like that very much. Mm -hmm. It's a nice balance. Yep. Great. Okay. So up so next, oh, wait, what, I don't have to thing, do this anymore, right? Jennifer, one quick thing though. Um, so in terms of like the, you know, what you're reading in terms of, I know you in the PowerPoint, I never got a copy of, maybe I missed it in the email. I didn't get a copy of the charge uh, and I didn't get a copy of, yeah, like the different positions and stuff like that you know so mm -hmm. that's something that you can share with us afterwards yeah absolutely i'd yeah, love to have that powerpoint too that was kind of cool. i can just i can send you guys the powerpoint if oh, you want that would be that would be perfect then. i I, yeah. I got it i got that already yeah i didn't i didn't get that 
And I also want to mention that there is a, uh, the committee has a page on the town's website that we're starting to populate a little bit. And we'll put materials on there as you develop materials that, so everybody can see what you're doing. And we'll put the agendas, the minutes, uh, your names, um, and then any, if there's studies or if you bring in links to things that you want people to pay attention to, we'll load it all in there so you can always find it uh, in one location. Excellent. Yep. And then, so I just, I wanted to go back to an earlier uh, conversation that you guys were having in regards to how and who was going to respond and how we were going to respond now that we have a chair established. So um, for point of contact and such, do we, do you guys want to have that discussion now? I think it yes. would be a good time. So, sure. because it seems like you guys were already contacted and before more people start contacting you, sure. you guys should have something in order. Yeah. So I guess, I guess for me, one would be, I think even before talking about that, do we have like, um, is that portal set up or, or something like that so that we can? So we can have that. I, I can reach out to IT tomorrow okay. and have them establish the email so that basically on the page, it'll say contact us and it'll go to everybody, including Paul and myself. Perfect. So I guess the question I have is with other committees we have in town, does it, does it only have to be the, the chair that have to speak on behalf of the group? I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I mean, for me, like what I think, what I think would be like, um, you know, Paul, um, it, it could be the, the point of uh, contact, right? Mm -hmm. And then obviously if he's not available, Brianna would, would be the one uh, first to, to, to contact. But then, but then to kind of like make sure to assign different folks, you know, to, 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 to do different things and respond for the group on different things. You know, I don't think it should always just be Paul or Brianna speaking on behalf of us. At least that's my opinion. But we'll also be having- okay, so Let me I'm clarify. Sorry. Oh, go I'm ahead. sorry, Pat, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say, we're, we're gonna be having meetings and uh, this will give us a chance to know each other and you know our our work and 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 our energy and availability and you know our knowledge base too what we can bring to this because um i would feel very uncomfortable if for example the press called me and said you know started to interview me about something and and i didn't feel i've had <clears throat> personally enough information to answer that question so maybe some of those things need to be filtered through uh, you know, our committee and it's small enough in, in that sense that, uh, you know, we can get in, input from people. Um, so, you know, we have to devise some way to have it so that any statements that do go out, like, for example, it could be me, it might be Brianna, might, might be Alicia, you know, responding. But I think if, if um, we're able to, you know, collate that information in some way so that if anybody says something like that, it's it's pretty clear that um, it's something that can be abided by by the and, and approved, if you will, by the committee. Okay, so let me clarify. Say somebody I run into some. I'm not even thinking of media per se. I'm thinking, you know, somebody that I know run into me and you know makes a comment or ask question, mm -hmm. and I want to speak just for myself. I mean, this is public meeting, you know. I want to speak for myself, or they have issues they want brought, you know, brought to all of us. You know, I'm not going to make decision or tell them, you know, this is the way it's going to be. But I will hope that our group will agree that we can express our personal opinion without saying we're speaking for a group. If people know what I mean, yeah. Yeah, Paul. So I think that's a good point. I think that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. I think what what um, without just reference on the council, what they if if a councilor is having a district meeting and they would like a representative from the group to speak, they might go to you because they know you or or someone else. But what you say is, well, actually, you should go through the chair who will designate someone to represent the committee at at your district meeting or whatever it is. You know, it might be that's what you want to do. But. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm thinking for the group that I belong to and um, our this group issue comes up, you know, um, I mean, I will be tended to make personal comment, not representing the group. I just want to be, you know, 
this is the way I operate. But when it comes to media, I don't even like talking to media. So I would definitely refer them to, to the chair and vice. But yeah. I don't want to limit myself to express my personal view about something. I mean, people run into me and say, you know, how is the group growing? I can, you know, tell them that it's taped and like, I'm not going to represent the group right. speak about the work we do here. Mm -hmm. And I, so I just want to say sometimes it, as a town employee, it can be really hard living in the town that you work in because mm -hmm. people... You, you don't want to get wrapped up and you don't want to say too much. I, yeah. I personally, because I'm an employee, try to stay neutral with everything. <clears throat> like I want to hear people's concerns and mm -hmm. be able to give them some type of response back, but not necessarily flip sides on one end or the other, if that makes sense. Right. So, I mean, that's a way to go about it too. I would suggest that we just kind of funnel everything that comes from the public to the chair, people are always going to ask you questions as your residents too, right? So, yeah. you know, you most likely can have those conversations, but rec make sure they're, the person you're speaking with clearly understands that you're speaking as yourself and not as a representative of the group. And then for media and, and the bigger things, you can say, well, you know, we have a process where we, you know, we go through and then, and Mr. Wiley can delegate to whomever he would like, if you would like to do it that way. Absolutely, that's precisely what I'm trying to say. Like when it comes to like formal inquiry, like media or they want somebody, a group wants somebody from this group to come and speak. Of course, we refer to the chair and then it's up to in the poll to decide what you want to do. I don't have any problem with that, but I just don't want to, like be fake and not say right. when somebody mm -hmm. asks me a question about the group, after all, this is an open group meeting. Meeting. Yeah. There's you know no secrecy. I mean, I'm not going to speak on behalf of anybody. I just want to be clear because I've been contacted by different people and people have their you know concerns they're already already bringing up to me, but we haven't started the meeting. But it's something I will channel to the group. But <clears throat> now I'm just being transparent right now letting people know. I think that's that's important too, because, you know, all of us have, you know, I know well, Russ and Deborah Pat for sure have been, you know, in, in this town a lot. And in some of the roles we've had, people do ask us questions about things related to our employment and where we worked and as school people and as university folks and, and as business owners with, with Pat, for example. Um, and, you know, you can run that through your own filter. And I think mm -hmm. one of the one of the things that you, and I agree with you, Pat, on that, is you don't want to seem evasive, but you want to have a conversation with someone mm -hmm. and be able to let them know the work is happening. You want to give them an avenue to uh, get the answers to their questions if they're related to the work of the committee, that kind of thing. I think that would be important. And, you know, of course, we're going to share some personal stuff with people. You know, let's let's be honest, but we're we're not going to be speaking for the group. Uh -uh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's my thought on it. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm good. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, while we're on that, I have just a question in terms of communication. So, Brianna, um, and Pat, and to Sheena, did I get that right? The, yeah. the, three, the three of you interviewed with Amherst Media. I didn't respond. No, she didn't. Who didn't? I think just me and Pat responded. Just me. Oh, just I got it wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah so, that's okay. So here, here's a question for, for you to consider. Um, if that airs tomorrow and two of us are on, on the screen talking about what we want, and the others are not there. Um, I wonder if that, how that looks to the community. One way it could look is that, well, those are the two that were available. Um, and the other could be like, where's everybody else? Right. Kind of thing. Right. This is Amherst after all. So <laughs> people <laughs> want to know, they want to know, they want to know. And I think that's part of the being transparent thing. So I don't know what people think about us all 
uh, who haven't done it, interviewing, it would have to be tonight because they're going to air it tomorrow, or just let it go. I recommend that you guys get in touch with the lady to interview you guys. She's already got in touch with me and I deferred it because I wasn't uh, certain as to whether or not I was, was gonna do it because we hadn't met. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm okay with uh, contacting her and just saying, um, you know, hey, you know, my time freed up. <laughs> if you want, you can uh, get in touch with me and we can talk tomorrow. I can shoot her an email. Russ, any comment? No, I wasn't. I wasn't at. I wasn't contacted. Oh, really? Uh, but uh -huh. I was. I was appointed later than the rest of you as well, uh, which may be a factor there. I don't know that we need to pursue the media around things, but given uh -huh. that they're asking, "Why did you want to be a part of this?" It seems to me like that's a question we could say everybody on the group can answer and can answer in the media. Make it clear you're not speaking for the committee. If they ask about, you know, the meetings, say they're taped, you can go look at them. Um, but I think it'd be fine for any of us to answer a few questions from the media about our, in, our personal individual um, basis for the decision to agreeing to serve. And when she, when she, when I talked to her, cause I talked to her today, I had like kind of pushed it off. Um, she really did only ask the one question. Why do you want right. to, yeah. you know, it's like she yeah. really only did ask. There was no, like, the only other thing she wanted to know was like, um, like who we were from the community. Like, how are you, how are you connected to this community? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the, she was, she made it very clear. That was the only question that she had was she just wanted to know why are, why are you interested in being part of this committee? So it was, it was I, oh, sorry. like there wasn't a bunch of like extra questions that came up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, sometimes yeah. I try to throw other stuff in there. And um, she really was like, she really stuck to it. It was like, I was literally talking to her for like five minutes, 10 minutes yeah. at the most. Me too. That was my experience too. She's an intern. And this is uh, a project of hers that she, it's actually um, going to start tomorrow evening. And it's a 15 minute segment. And she was hoping to interview as many of us as possible. And she would then select a clip, like 30 seconds, according to her. Um, so my interaction with her was like less than six minutes. She wanted to know something about myself, to introduce myself, so that, um, and then she asks why um, we, I hope to accomplish in this group. And it's exactly what I said, you know, when we started this meeting today, I didn't say anything on behalf of anybody. I actually tried to discourage her prior to the interview to hold off that we're meeting today, that I really don't have any information to give her about our group and I couldn't speak on behalf of our group. But then she explained to me that it's a project that has to start tomorrow evening. You know, I kind of, and I was trying to help her. I mean, she's a student intern, you know, to get mm -hmm. her work done so that she can get A. She's also senior at UMA. She's graduated in May. So it's a, you know, academic program for her, I guess. Okay. Trying to help her out more than anything else. Well, I, think. I do. I do think our committee needs to build a relationship with the community in our roles on this committee. We need to be accessible and transparent. Exactly. Um, and I, I think we can, can help ourselves by um, you know, being responsive where we can, even though we can, none of us can speak for the committee. Boy, I'm going to struggle with this group. <laughs> I am just used to speaking my mind. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, that was the, the, the end game for my question, just to see that we were all comfortable with either doing it or if some of us didn't do it, we felt okay with it. But it sounds like, and I think you know, all the input says, you know, this, is, this is pretty easy. 
Very, and, very. And so yeah. if, it's, if it's our first sort of salvo into the community through Amherst Media, it'll be a pretty good one because people will hear that five minute comment or whatever it's gonna be. So, um, okay. She didn't even, yeah, she didn't even know who, who I am. Um, um, I believe the executive director of uh, um, MS Media contacted Vera, my friend. So Vera uh, in, forwarded the email to me and yeah. connected and then the executive director connected me to the intern student. And okay. So, like all right. So, so people, so, you know, the, the folks in the group feel like they can make that comment and feel comfortable about it. I would say we just go ahead and go forward and follow up. Yeah. And one thing, Paul, like just for the future, and I, I think this discussion was great in terms of what everyone was saying, because I think what we want, might want to think about is that, right, is the fact that, we, you know, folks are going to be coming to us. Um, so in terms of making sure that we are visible, so we might want to think, how do we want to do that, right? It's not just creating that portal so that folks go there, but also to be able to say, communicate that, yeah, you know, we're here, you're doing this work. If you all want to kind of, you know, this is who we are. If you all want to know how to share, because I really want to get input from the community. This can't be just right. us doing the work in a silo. Right. Well, I, I would think that with, you know, setting up meeting schedules and, you know, future planning and that kind of stuff, we will we'll undoubtedly take a more, we have to, because we're seeking information, take a proactive kind of uh, effort to this work. And uh, so if we're taking initiatives and people are seeing that too, uh, in a very public way, I think it'll help all the way around and create a more positive exchange between the, the town and this group, not, I mean, a positive, not a more positive, but a positive exchange. So, so we're good? We're good. Okay. So next meeting date and meeting schedule. Sorry. Paul, I have to ask a, a question in terms of, did you have any, any vision or Jennifer, uh, in mind for what that schedule might look like, or are you gonna leave that all up to us? A, a lot of it depends on what, you know, looking at the charge, um, you know, I don't know how frequent, you know, we, we should be having meetings uh, in order enough to give us time to do the work in between. Well, Jen, Jen and I just talked a little bit about this uh, yesterday, I think. Um, I think you won't meet next week because it's Thanksgiving clearly, but I think you're going to need to meet weekly um, until Christmas basically um, and see where, how far you get. And we were just thinking you might, you, your first couple of meetings will probably be information gathering times um, to meet with people you think might give you guidance. Uh, um, Jen, do you have things you want to? Yeah. So I think, you know, there's a couple of things that need to, that needs to happen. Well, you have to gather yeah. information from three, three to four places, right? So public safety, you need information from there. You need information from the other community organizations and agencies that help support the different um, communities that serve the different communities in Amherst. And then you need uh, in, input from the community itself. So somehow you have to figure out which is the best way to do that? I yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can't believe Thanksgiving is next week. Already. I know. I know. I just looked over here at my calendar. My goodness. So, um, yeah. mm -hmm. so we had thought possibly, you know, it, whichever way that you want to do it, but, you know, there's police and fire that you're going to have to connect with. Yeah. And then there's places like Craig's Door and the Amherst Survival Center and Mary Beth Ogilwich over at the um, Amherst Senior Center um, and the folks from Craig's Doors. Did I say, yeah, Craig's Doors. Great. And then... Um, there's also the, the community input that would be needed. 
What about, um, so when you're saying to getting uh, uh, input from certain agencies, like, I mean, what about the Human Rights Commission? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, folks yeah. like that. And then also, I mean, I really want to be able to get um, information and I don't know how that would go, but like from um, young people, you know what I'm saying? I think mm -hmm. to, to make sure that we're getting some agencies that are connected to young people, because that's who I, I want to hear from and young people from all economic backgrounds mm -hmm. and, and yeah. So um, I worked with some of the youth over the summer and we got to come up with a creative way to get the youth to voice their concerns. Um, for one, I don't, I feel like they're not very trusting um, of us adults and also, um, I, I call me judgy. I don't know. I've had kids, you know, I have kids from 25 down to four. So um, this younger generation doesn't really know how to express themselves. They get very stuck in what's going on in their head and they don't necessarily know how to articulate what their needs are. And we got really stuck when we were working with the um, youth group, um, trying to get, we have, you have a few little, you know, a few kids that would speak, but we could, it was so hard to like get this information and you could tell that they were angry and you could tell that they felt disrespected and you could tell that they were like very frustrated, but trying to get them to like, work through that in a in a way that we could like put something tangible behind it was really it became really difficult um so i just wanted to put that out there because you know like you know whoever's willing to front that stuff like really needs to like figure out a way to really get them get them engaged to get the information that we need to get out of them in order for us to help make those changes. Cause I'm telling you, I, it was like, it was like pulling teeth, even to just get them on a zoom call was like pulling teeth. And when they got on the zoom call, nine times out of 10, they didn't talk. And it was like, it ended up being yeah. all the time. We're like, come on guys, we want you to talk. And we we're trying to give them, you know, things that might inspire them to talk and they just wouldn't do it. Um, so you know, that's, that's just something to think about. Um, I also wanted to put out there that um, I would be interested in, um, I'd be interested in working with the police and the fire, like the police and fire departments. But I feel like we need more of an outline of what exactly we're what exactly we're looking for like you know what i'm saying like what we're what are ex like i don't think we have we haven't really laid out expectations yeah. um and we haven't like i feel like it's easier to have a conversation when you know uh, when you're going to somebody and you're like look you know i feel like this is difficult because a b and c like what are you guys, what are your thoughts about that? You know, like to get their thoughts about it. And I don't feel like we really have laid out expectations of these different organizations or like, yeah, I, I think I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I think Tashina is right. We've got some work to do with each other before we meet with anybody else so that we can really plan the questions and, and structure what we're after. As, as you Tashina, I should mention, um, Youth, I kind of agree with you, uh, but we already have some youth group, youth groups in, in town, like the school system. I'm thinking about Puku. Uh, several years ago, when um, a local radio show, radio, uh, Northampton in Northampton, one of uh, the town officials, including the superintendent and the town manager, not you, um, 
and some parents, community uh, members to, to speak on racism and school racism. And it was through POKU that I was able to tap some of the youth that came and they spoke eloqu eloquently. Yeah, I think know, about, about racism. So I, my point is there are some avenue to tap some of those youths. I remember when I ran a rest, uh, back a restaurant, I would have some of my white um, business owners call police on some of our youth after, when they got up from school, just hanging out behind the, uh, my business building. What I did was actually, I kind of turned back a restaurant into like informal after school program, I will bring them into my restaurant, offer them just cool water, that they want snack, um, ask them how their day went today. I send them downstairs in my basement to, you know, make sure that they complete their homework. I actually got an award, Paragon Award by the MS Bulletin, MS um, Gazette for the work I did with, with the youth. Just one-on-one -on -one informally, I think that um, I agree with Ross about, we need to do some work within ourselves before, you know, so that we know what our goals are in order to reach out to different groups. But there are some resources we can tap into to collect information, I think. But I do agree with you, Tashina. Yeah, I think this. that's excellent, it's mm -hmm. an excellent, um, idea and a group to like reach out to. I just like, my whole thing is I just don't know what's going on with groups like POKU with the pandemic and people not actually being right. in school and like how connected. And that's the thing that concerns me is that, you know, with this whole pandemic, you know, people are, they're harder to reach, but they're also, you know, there's a whole, they're going through a whole slew of depression. Like I'm like trying to like maintain myself and I'm like, I can't imagine what the kids are going through mm -hmm. as like every their everything norm uh, every bit of normalcy has like been taken away from them mm -hmm. yeah. what I'd like to so, suggest uh, wait, maybe if I, I'm Paul, sorry go ahead Who's sorry speaking? Paul yeah I know we we don't have that much time I just want to make yeah. quick but just just yeah. so you know Tashina I have an in on that my my son is a vice president of Poku so yeah. you there you go there you go <laughs> so, we have, so we have all right. the, you'll get okay. everyone on there that needs to be on there all right. they go um, talk Really and, and then and then there is uh, this youth with uh human right human right commission um i have uh, uh, monica cage vera's daughter i mean if we look deeply we will we'll find some yeah. youth that can give us uh, a yeah. good feedback for sure mm -hmm. petua so what i go what ahead i was going to suggest is that you know given the, the short time we have right now too um i i would think you know, this was an introductory meeting where we're getting a lot of information. We're sort of staging some of the things we have to do already. And uh, it probably would be important for us to, to start building a meeting schedule and creating an agenda for that, that first meeting that actually includes these things so that we can create the foundation we need going forward. Because we have to have some clarity uh, on what we're doing and some purpose be, um, so that, you know, whatever we're doing out there is going to feed into what's going to make this group effective. So I, I like to you know, push us to think about um, um, meeting. I don't know whether we, some uh, meeting times, whether we did it as Jennifer did, you know, and others have done you know, with doodles or whatever, because people have very varied amounts of times and uh, available. But I would like to see us have uh, a for first meeting after the Thanksgiving in that first week of December if we could. And um, so that's one thing I'd like, like to push for now. Um, and if we can, as Pat Paul was saying, you know, this could be a weekly thing. If we could um, set up a doodle, like then say what, what day each week might we meet and at what time, then we can, we can put some assignments out there and, and get some things moving. Any, any thoughts on that, other people? Jennifer, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, so I was going to suggest something similar to that in that I think the first step is I send the PowerPoint out so that everybody has a clear understanding of what the charge is and what the expectations of the group are. Um, 
And by the next meeting, people have a better understanding so that you can have some type of conversation about what the what group that we need to meet with next um, or what we need to, what you guys need to do next, right? So we can just have, an, we can have another meeting without inviting anybody to the group so that everybody's on the same page and has a clear understanding of, of where we need to move forward to. I think, I think that, that makes that sense. Good. I think yeah. it might also help us to have a little conversation right now about possible meeting times. So we know, I mean, if, yeah. if Deborah, we, we're working around Deborah's work schedule and maybe other people's, let's get some idea of what kinds of times mm -hmm. can go on the doodle. Exactly. I also would like, like if we can, if it's possible um, to try to have the same day and same time, like for me, yeah. because like then I can like chip out that time and be like this is what I need to be doing at that time versus you know trying to figure out each week when where I need to be because that because ADHD that's why <laughs> so yeah. does Thursday work for everybody every week Thursday evening Deborah you are up from work at what time five five yes, thirty five o'clock I can I, yeah Thursday works it looks like Thursday but it has to be at five five to six thirty so you're saying you're you're available five p.m. or after yeah, five I'm available at five got you okay the, how yeah, does yeah. I'm off the clock at five so okay Five so you're, you're suggesting your first meeting, uh, a couple of people are suggesting your first meeting be Thursday the 3rd at 5.30? No, 5 o'clock is 5 o'clock. It's not at 5. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're I don't going to push it too late because I know folks have dinner and all that stuff. So 5 o'clock is, is fine for me. Mm -hmm. could, we, uh, could we make so 5 work? Well, let, let me ask about Thursdays because okay. we it's going to hit Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Oh, that's right. And yeah, I'm wondering. Okay. We have to shift. And, and the, the third is the third is difficult for me, but okay. So, what other day works for people? Are Wednesdays we, an option? What if we did a Tuesday? Tuesday, okay. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday would be better for me than Wednesday. Tuesday. Tuesday. So okay. Tuesday does not work for me. I could do Wednesdays. Okay. I can do I can do Monday. What about Monday? Does Monday work for everybody? I can do Monday. Russ? Well, let's let's I, go to let's go to Russ's thing. What does Wednesday look like for everybody? Just that I have a I have a, a standing staff meeting for four to five on Wednesdays and sometimes they go over a little bit, so that's why. Uh-huh. Okay. Could we meet at five thirty on Wednesdays? Would that work for you? I was going to ask. Yeah, 5.30 is fine. 5.30 on Wednesdays? I can yeah. do 5.30 on Wednesdays. Okay, that works so for me. That's December 2nd. Yeah. 5.30. That's usually when I visit my grandson, but maybe he'll join the meeting. He's, he's I too young. <laughs> He's two years old. He has a lot to say, so he might be here. <laughs> Want to try that, folks? I think it's important to hear the voice of youth. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be surprised. So every Wednesday, Christina, don't speak too fast on that because <laughs> you'll be I hearing from the other. Room. Out of my room, so. <laughs> so so five thirty. We're going to try to do 5.30 for on Wednesday. That's Every that's Wednesday? Our, every Wednesday? Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. And so, um, so, yeah. So, Jennifer, you're going to send that information. Um, and uh i could be i'd be happy to 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 put out a an initial draft of a first agenda for folks if they if you want to take a look at it i can do it on on google or just do it by email if that helps get the ball started 
uh, rolling. Um, and then. And then we should contact, we should contact you if there's something that needs to be, at, or we need, we want to add to the agenda. That's what I'm suggesting. Yeah, just like it would be a starter. It would be a draft agenda. And I'm taking some notes based on what we just said today. But you're gonna, I'm no doubt, have some afterthoughts, and maybe we can, you know, develop an agenda in terms of what we're working on, what kind of decisions we have to make, those kinds of things. So, all right. Would you be open to suggestions for the agenda before you make it, or do you want us to see your first oh, draft and then make suggestions? Absolutely. It, it, to me, I, that's a great question. I didn't. I'm, I was just offering that as a lead, but certainly, Felicia, and any time, and oh. um, you know. Because that actually help, and I would encourage everybody to do that if okay, you have I thoughts on it now. Another question about that. So, if I did have something that I wanted to suggest for the agenda, I would communicate with you via email, and then would I also send that to the entire group or just to you personally? I would send it to the entire group. Okay. Me okay. And I, think it's the best I think it's personal. I think. I think what they were saying before is it, send it to the chair and then a copy to Jennifer so it can be kept on the um so it can there there can be a trace of it or whatever. And there's just no to everybody because it puts us at risk for being Borrow. in violation of the open That's meeting right. law. That's yeah. right. Oh, just for sending yeah. this agenda. Okay, yeah. Just, just anything right. that you could possibly all come up with a decision on, like should we add yeah. this, that puts us in 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 violation yeah. or That's at right. risk of being in Good violation. So, Thank so you. Yeah. Just as a Good general point. rule of thought, we don't send anything. <laughs> it just just what whatever specific like one specific person and Jennifer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Jennifer I mean, if, if me. you have like an article that you want to share with the group, that's fine. But anything that like anything else, you should probably just channel to be on the safe side. That looks like a decision. You want to get yeah, it. That's right. Don't want to do that. OK. And if you want something shared with the group, I would send it to Jennifer and say, please share this with the group. It okay. just cleans yep. it up because she's not subject to the open meeting law as a staff person. Sounds good. OK. So I'm sending the PowerPoint now okay that's advantage of being at work while we're in these evening <laughs> meetings so that's jennifer good. the only other thing would be also once you get that portal mm -hmm. and we'll know mm -hmm. so i will send you an email tomorrow i'm it's really good about getting things like that done so i'm quite sure it'll be done by the uh by tomorrow excellent mm -hmm. and just to be clear for the uh wednesday meeting it's 5 30 until What's the, time? What's the end time? I mean, how much time do you guys think you need? Do you think that an hour and a half is enough? Do you think you need two hours? Two hours. Mm. I'm, I mean, because of the... I'm not as sure that there's a set time that it has to end if we post mm -hmm. it, as in... Right, yeah. Like, it can go over, but we can't start earlier than scheduled, correct, Paul, or? That's, oh, that Paul, yeah. <laughs> I think it would be good if we could block out two hours. Let's hopefully not use all of it sometimes, but. Yeah, I think. At, least at, the, at least at the beginning, I'm sorry. No, I, just I think it would be the best. Beginning if we're, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Pat. As, at least at the beginning, if we can block out two hours, and maybe if our load get lessened, maybe we can go one and a half hours. But at the beginning, I, I'm thinking two hour block. The other thing I was I, I wanted to ask a question about really quick um, is that are we going to at any point going to have like um, allow for for community to ask questions, like have open discussion, like have community input or whatever, like through, like through at the end of our meetings. Yes, cool. So, so under the town charter, you have to have that in every meeting. You have to have a, allow a time for community comment. So at the end of this meeting, uh, the chair will say, is there any community comment? There isn't anybody in the audience, but anybody who usually you give them two or three minutes to say what they want and then that you don't respond to it. But I also think you'll want to figure out, you'll start talking about how do we engage, just like we started talking about, how do we engage the community? It's not just us people coming to you, it's going to be you going into the community and right. engaging with folks. Yeah. So I have I have something I want to bring up 
um, which is more like a cultural thing. Since we're such a diverse um, group, and I'm happy if people have other ideas they want to bring in, but I come from a culture where respect is very, very critical. How do people feel uh, by, in terms of how we address each other? I don't like to be called by my first name, just like that. Everybody knows me for that. So are people okay to put Miss, Mrs, Mr, town manager, you know, principal, whatever. And that, you know, that's how I was raised. So I don't know if people want for what to it's chime worth. In. I, I don't know goes. what you know people want to chime in on that. Yeah, for what it's worth, I was on a, a Zoom meeting once where this kind of came up and uh, in the, you know, how you name yourself in, in the meeting was important for a lot of people as well as their, you know, their identification uh, pronouns. So they, you know, they actually put it right there in the, in the title. So if I wanted uh, Mr. Wiley, you know, they, you know, they put it in it. It's whatever you wanted to be, how you ever you want to be addressed in that thing, for that particular meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed to work for them. So but. when I when I type the names into the Zoom because I have to put you in as a panelist, uh, if you send me either how you would like your name to be listed, then I can adjust it. So so if you would like yours to say Miss Pat Anabaku or Miss Pat or Miss Anabaku and Tashina wants pronouns after hers. I can do all of that. I just need to know. So if you send me how you would like your name to be listed, then I can change that from the very I, beginning of the meeting. Most people call me Mrs. Pat. I'm on okay. back and I'm, you know, that's my culture. That's what we're used to. If you ask a lot of Nigerians, um, mm -hmm. you know, especially as you get older, it's very important that. Mm -hmm you know, we call people respectfully. Yep. It's, a big, it's a big thing for me, actually. Yep, no, so and, if you just send that in an email so that I have the correct, everything correct. Mrs., I just said it, Mrs. I know, but listen, <laughs> you gotta send if everybody it. <laughs> sends it in an email, then there's no, there's no issues, right? So. I, Are people I okay think with that or no? Yes, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, can I suggest that we all just send our preferred um, names or way of being called to Jennifer as well as our gender pronouns? Mm -hmm. Like, I think we should all just do both. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I agree. I agree. Very good. And we also have the capability to rename ourselves in this meeting. I mean, I think, I think we should send it all to Jennifer. But if you don't like the way it comes out, you can rename yourself by clicking on the three little dots in the upper right corner of your yeah. video. Yeah. So um, I'm just looking back. I don't wanna cut off any discussion here about that certainly, but I'm looking at the, we did our next meeting date and meeting schedule and we've been talking in and out of future planning, which I think is gonna take place between now and the first meeting, certainly. Um, there's a, a general public comment. And uh, I think that was referred to already and discussed. And I was just wondering if there were any other comments about that or questions. So I wonder if you want to put a time reference on it. I don't know that all, like the Human Rights Commission allocates a specific amount of time, but we don't allocate a specific amount of time for the individual to speak. And then something as sensitive as the topics that could be coming up here, you might not want to, or you might want to. It all depends. As of today, we don't have any attendees, but my guess is as we continue on and dig a little deeper into the work that more attendees will be. And this um, will be at the, at, this, at the end of our meeting, correct? No, anywhere you place the public comment. Anywhere you, I, I heard be at the end before, but. And um, do we know how we accept public comment? Is it they call in on Zoom or do they submit it in writing or? So they would be, they would raise their hand. 
Okay, so they I can, I can see them. Okay. And they can raise their hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds good. So will oh, you wait. Jennifer, will you let us know um if we have like is there a way for you to let us know if we have an audience? Yes, absolutely. And then I I think you can see now, actually, if you click on the participants button, and then oh, there's nice, panel. Nice people. There's nice. panelists, and then there's attendees. Do you see two different things? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, that makes sense. So we like it, as people like log in or whatever, we can see who's in attendance. Okay. Yes. And and so, is there like gonna be a running link as well? Um, so that like for me who lives on Facebook and social media half my day, um, I can post like, hey, if there's anybody who would like to like sit in on the meeting, blah, 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 here's the link, you know. So the meeting has to be posted 48 hours in advance. Okay. Um, we don't have, a, I, I'm a little hesitant to put a standard link in case something, I changes or whatever the case may be. Um, so just, I will send everybody the link when the agenda is posted, which is okay. when I usually create the link. So that's at okay. least 48 hours. Um, and then you can copy the link and then, you know, put it on Facebook and move forward from there. Okay. And Jennifer, is the link posted when the meeting is announced? Yes. So if you go to amherstma.gov under the calendar portion of the pay of the front page, uh, the meeting is posted there as an as the way as it is with any standard meeting. So, you know, most likely by November 30th or December 1st, no, by November 30th at minimum, we'll just say the 27th, you should be able to go to the mm -hmm. website and um, click on December 2nd and the community safety working group meeting should be posted there. The, the only difference is that you will get a link as a panelist mm -hmm. individually, and then the public will see a link to the meeting in general. Yeah. But uh, Jennifer can promote people into the room to speak when it's time. Yeah. Uh, so know, just, just to clarify, yeah, that was what I was going to say. So, so can we, when, when Jennifer sends us the link, just so I want to be clear. So when, when Jennifer sends us the link, can we share that on Facebook? No. So, so, so it's only once it's posted on the website? No. So what happens is, so if you recall, I sent, um, you got a, a specific invitation for you as a panelist. Oh, and then I it. sent the agenda. The link that is on the agenda, you can copy okay, and paste and share out okay. or tell people how to access the agenda and they can move forward from there. What you receive as an invitation as a panelist, please do not share yeah, um, with anyone else. Panelist. I don't want to have to boot anybody out of a meeting. Right? And Russ, I think you had that's a question. You can... Yeah, I'm sorry, Deborah. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Russ, I, that's why I wanted to clarify because I was confused by that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Russ, you had a question a while back. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk about this now, but I'd like to ask that we have on our agenda a discussion of this webinar format for meetings. Um, I think that the, I understand the importance of Zoom mobbing, uh, but I think Zoom now has features that we could beat on a regular Zoom meeting where participants can see each other. And I think it would build our credibility as a transparent uh, group with the community. But I understand that's a, a discuss, complicated discussion, but I'd like to have it on the agenda next time. Mm-hmm, okay, it's on. Okay. Can you see me, Paul? Yes, hi. Okay, hi. So I just have a question for the town manager. Mm -hmm. So I did the membership, seven people or nine people? Are you going to be recruiting more people or this is it? I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. So the interview team interviewed everyone who had applied and they they had recommended this group of seven and felt pretty comfortable with this group of seven. Um, and if you sort of say, we really need someone in th that represents this thing or that thing, we will um, uh, in a, um, move forward on it. But at this point, I think they're comfortable and I am with this group moving okay. forward. 
So it's seven member. Okay. I just want you can, we can go to nine now, but okay. we don't have to. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Paul, we're going to have to change our names. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, something, we'll figure it out. Um, okay. Um, Wait, one, question, one quick question. Yeah, about go ahead. Numbers. Um, is there... I feel like, I feel like, are we allowed to have somebody who is under 18 part of this committee or should, is there someone who's like 18 around like that age that we can get part of this committee? So the Human Rights Commission typically has a high school student on it itself. So yes, which is great. So she a, has I a lot of insight. Absolutely like to see a high school student um, as part of this committee. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know how anybody else feels about that, but yeah. Yeah, I think that, yeah, we can get, um, you know, high school students. Yeah. I think high school age would probably be, you know, the, the better age because obviously we go any younger than that can get a confusing, but like a high school age student to, to be part of the committee, that would be great. Yeah. So I don't know, if but obviously we need to we need to figure that out sooner rather than later because also we don't want them to play too much catch up. It wouldn't be fair to them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, I guess if if there's um, I mean, the easiest way is like if you know people just to like send them the application to have them, you know, apply or whatever. I think that would be the easiest thing. Um, okay. I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe your son can, you know, put the application out to the members of POKU past and present. I don't know how much, how many he has contact with, but that might make, yeah. I, I feel like it makes sense because it's like, we do have a very good broad range of experiences and ages and so on and so forth. But I feel like we need, like, this is going to affect them more than it's going to affect me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I feel like they we need to have their voice more directly. Especially, yeah, yeah. Could, especially, um, could, could, especially, could someone, yeah. um, could Jennifer or, or, or Paul, can you all send me that link again, the invitation um, to be part of it? Because obviously I can forward that to, to my son Phoenix and he can share it with uh, Poku to see if anyone from Poku would wanna be interested in uh, applying. And it would be great if um, a black male uh, youth to, to, you know, to show interest. It's what I was hoping for this group to include. And Tashina, thank you for raising that. Yes. And I just have a question uh, for uh, Paul. Um, so we all went through an interview process by a group, if we were to add someone, uh, add a student to this committee, would they have to go through that process to follow, follow protocol? Or could there be another method of putting uh, a student on, on, the, on the working group? Um, well, if they want to be a voting member of the group, they would have to follow that process. We would do the interview, uh, I'd make the appointment, the town council would review and a in a, in a point, just like okay. everyone here, that okay. has happened with everyone here. Um, I mean, you, we could think about a student um, non-voting member who wouldn't, we have done that with some committees. Um, it still went through sort of the process though. So. Yeah, I, would, I think given the conversation, um, voting membership would be a stronger message than yes. non-voting for yes. sure. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah. And yeah, and so I think, yeah, I think that, I think that, like, I'd feel more comfortable if they were a voting member, personally. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then if anyone else has any other adults, too, that I'm in touch with, um, different group, uh, youth organizations, you all should share that link, too. Yeah, actually, Jennifer, send it to me, too, because um, I'll send it out to the, um, the Youth of Black Lives Matter group and so i'll just i'll send it out to everyone because we have right. 
seven of you and then so there's still two slots so if you know folks who are interested it, you guys can invite whomever to apply all right Does and i don't i don't see asian community represented in our group uh, no and i i have someone in mind i it's a it's a a, a community that we're not well and tapped with and I'm starting to slowly build relationships with people from the Cambodian community yeah, and the like um, that, Chinese yeah. community as well. Yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, it's, mm. it's slow. We can't meet in person. We can't do things live in the way that we used to. So trying to get everyone included has been a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. Is anyone Spanish here? I'm, oh, you are? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, That's good. Um, I would be open to having somebody else also though, because I am Puerto Rican and I'm not sure if you guys have much knowledge about Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans, but I grew up very American. I'm the first generation here. I speak okay. like bootleg Spanish. Um, and yeah, I'm more American than Spanish. Mm -hmm. I would say I align more with that culture. Oh, I would try to reach out to Asian community because I have some connection to see, you know, I'm not promising anything there. It will make me feel real good <clears throat> to have mm -hmm. youth and Asian person mm -hmm. join our group. Absolutely. Agreed. So we're going to work this feedback through uh, Jennifer and um, you know, other uh, sort of funneling down some of this information in terms of creating an agenda. Um, uh, I think uh, Alicia brought this up a while ago in terms of could anybody, it doesn't have to, you don't have to wait for me to create the agenda, I'll be working on it. Be happy to accept uh, topics for the agenda uh, for us to consider um, on on the third. So that would be just a reminder to folks. Is, it's, is, it, it's the second. A second, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes. Yes, second, thank you, Paul. Um, are there any other pieces of business we need to pull together for this particular meeting. I know we had talked a little bit about uh, public safety, looking for other organizations that we can reach out to and um, tapping into the community itself. Did we want to set like homework or different organizations that we can reach out to to talk about at our next meeting or? I think, Jennifer, did you mention something about, you started a, a, a verbal list going and I'm, uh, that was a question I had very similar to Brianna's too about could could there be some kind of uh, list of folks folks slash um, agencies groups that we would want to outreach to under the umbrella of you know safety yes if you could get that to us and I think you know again part of the job I think would be to what are the kinds of uh, ways we're gonna communicate with these groups to get the kind of information we'd like to, to have. So it's a matter of you know developing some questions, uh, figuring out who is going to contact whom, that kind of thing. And I kind of envision that happening in the next meeting. So do, we, so do we send the, make suggestion to you, Jennifer, just send you lists, okay. Yes, so if you know of organizations, I only <clears throat> um, spoke on a few, but if you yeah. know of organizations, mm -hmm. even just send them and we'll get a nice list going and then we can talk about how to reach out and maybe we can have like a larger meeting with and invite them or what, however you guys decide to move forward with that. When, did you, when do you want that, <laughs> Jennifer? You've got other lives and I'm sure to deal with. When, um, when do you want that information so well, that we if, can target something? I mean, it would just need to be in time to roll out with the agenda, I think, because that would be a top discussion. Yeah. So from now, I mean, and, and it's not Anytime. limited. So, okay. you know, perhaps uh, Tashina thinks of one today and then, right. you know, in a week later has another one to add. So that's fine. It can that's be good. a rolling list. Okay, good enough. Send it to you in an email, right? Yes, please, at moistandj. At amherstma.gov, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> where you reside yes <laughs> yeah. okay anything else anybody 
I thought this is a very good meeting, good mm -hmm. start, getting to know one another. So it is good. Yep. Nice to meet every meet, meet new people too. Mm -hmm. Folks. Yep. Um, so without any other things coming up, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Yes. First, I'd like to say thank you to Paul for agreeing to be chair and to Brianna for being our vice chair and to say what a pleasure it is to work with everyone. And I move we adjourn. <laughs> Second hey, thank, thank you, you. Russ. Any like to second that motion? Pat, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That does not going to be a roll call vote. <laughs> 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 and uh, Brianna and I accept food anytime you want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Since we don't get paid for this. Uh, thank you, everyone. And um, I wish us all well. I think we're going to do some great work. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Have a good holiday. Be safe. Be safe. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye-bye.